the mortar that we'll be rebuilding is a year 2000, and it performed great until it hit a submerged plastic bag, which covered the cooling intake, and it overheated severely. The cylinder head warped from overheating and allowed seawater into the cylinders and the crankcase, and it rusted in a day. Here I'm taking it apart and trying to clean it up and salvage what I can. The piston was scored, the skirt expanded, scored against the cylinder walls. I was not about to give up on this motor. So here, look, here's the cylinder walls, they're scored. There's a deep score right there, but they're not warped. They're machinable. I sent it to a machine shop. Both holes were rebored 10 over, and they're beautiful. Everything's wonderful. I can reuse it. Yes! And I painted the, uh, I ordered a new cylinder head and painted it yellow. I don't know why. Now to get started, have all your tools laid out, all the parts, nice and clean, ready to go. New bearings. I got new pistons, 10 oversize, new rings. And I cleaned that crankshaft up real nice, you can see. And have everything laid out. Now, first thing I did was just to gap all four rings in their respective bores. Now both bores are the same. The gap tolerances are in the service manual which is very important to have because it has everything you need, all the information and how to assemble everything. Now here we do the pistons, the wrist pin, the connecting rod, and this is tricky because Johnson's these small ones have all 22 little tiny individual needle bearings that you have to assemble. And I'll show you here, I'm going to sit here and babble on while you watch okay what am I doing here okay the wrist pin you put it like this and support the piston and you there's the washer and you install that on there and there's the connecting rod and you need needle bearing grease or Vaseline if you just have that laying around as a backyard mechanic you sometimes have to make do but Vaseline will work because it breaks up in the crankcase that's a very important and then all you have to do very carefully is insert every single little needle bearing in there and have them stick. The Vaseline will have them keep them sticking together and you'll see why. And I keep calling these little individual pieces needle bearings but they're just needles. I'm just not good at narrating and talking to my computer here. I feel a little stupid. The needles for this bearing are being held in place by the grease. And of course, I'm holding it against gravity, all worried about the camera like a dummy. But um, just be very careful assembling it and into the piston. And this one, it's you don't have to worry about a press or a special tool. The, the wrist pin just slid right in. Next, check the assembly to make sure that all the little needles are in place and nobody's hung up and this looks good and you have to do this twice then install the little retaining clip there the next step is to install the piston rings the tapered one goes in the top groove you just gotta make sure you get the right rings and the correct grooves there Notice I'm using light machine oil there, but you have to go back and use two cycle oil to lube the assembly. I just did this for the camera, to, for visibility. Rings can't rotate in their groove, so there's little pins you can see that right there where the ring gap is there's a little pin and it must line up with that the ring cannot rotate in the cylinder so you make sure that when you're installing them that they're lined up properly if you can't find your uh, ring compressor you have a friend help you this these engines are so small that with a friend's help we were able just to use a couple of chopsticks to compress the rings 
and let them fall into the slot. Just make sure that you don't get slivers. Are those guys playing without you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there. I'm probably driving See? nuts. Like, Thank you. Temporarily put the uh, cylinder head on so the pistons don't fall out for assembly. And here are the bearings for the uh, crank pins. New bearings were assembled onto the crankshaft. And you can see the crankshaft is is stained from when I cleaned it. It was a little rusty and it's it, it looks like pitting but it's not. It's just some staining. It's quite functional and useful and it's not warped. And here you install it and there's little dowels with the bearings that must line up. The other half of the bearing goes on the crank pin and the rod cap goes on top of that and they must line up very carefully and each connecting rod and its cap comes as a set. They're not interchangeable. It's crucial that they're uh, very carefully lined up. Check rod and cap alignment and then tighten to the proper torque which is 60 to 70 inch pounds and now we're tired. We're gonna end this. I'm very tired and we will continue in part two assembling this motor.